name is Donna White and I'm a fellow in the American Academy of Board Experts in Traumatic Stress and I'm also a certified compassion fatigue educator and therapist. Whether you are a healthcare provider or whether you're a family member or you work in an agency or you work in a recovery home, wherever it is that we face stress, I try to assist personnel and family members and individuals themselves in how to react, respond, and modulate the stress. Now let me clarify that there are different types of stress. There is a very specific type of stress that we all face every day. And there is some stress that actually can be beneficial. Small levels of stress can help oxygenate the brain and can increase your awareness to do a specific function, such as taking a test or, or whatever. You'll never be able to fully eliminate stress in our lives. Now, when stress becomes dysfunctional, it's, it's when it cannot be modulated, when you have maladaptive strategies or no strategies to deal with the stress. So that's a prolonged, and if you have prolonged stress, that's where the body adapts physiologically, and we really have to teach ourselves and others how to approach that stress so that we can have what we, we call in healthcare allostasis. We want to bring ourselves back down to that level of wellness and homeostasis. One of the ways in which we can help ourselves deal with stress is to utilize the concept of mindfulness. Now, mindfulness has been around in various cultures for decades, eons. And it's only recently come to, to Western medicine. But with a lot of the research that Western medicine requires, they have found that mindfulness actually is an extremely useful strategy. Hospitals are using it, uh, state troopers are using it, prisons are using it. And what they're finding, especially in teaching people mindfulness concepts prior to surgery, it helps people utilize those strategies post-op so they need less pain medicine. Now, mindfulness is very basic. Mindfulness is being aware of yourself. It's paying attention to your own body, to your own feelings, to your own physiological responses and being intentional with it and being non-judgmental to yourself, having that self-compassion if you're not perfect. So to teach people how to deep breathe, this is a very simple strategy. To close your eyes, if you have a, a history of trauma, you may not want to close your eyes. That's fine. And I often teach the men and the women that I've worked with, you don't have to. Just relax and let's just deep breathe. Now there's structured deep breathing, and there's just deep breathing. Whatever works for you. There's also the concept called microaggressions. We do so much of that during the day. We can have those responses that are aggressive, and we're not even aware of it when we're stressed. I try to teach people to change that, do micro-compassions. Acknowledge someone. Acknowledge what they've done well. A coworker walking by them and saying, you've done that really well. I noticed that was a difficult encounter. This is good. You did a good job. We don't do that very often in healthcare because we're busy. The other thing I teach people, including the people in recovery, sit on the side of your bed when you get up in the morning for 15 seconds, just seconds, and sit there and affirm yourself what your plan is for the day. And it can be as simple as, my thought is to have a good day. What mindfulness does is learn to control what we call the monkey mind. That's the amygdala in your brain. So you can't sort of keep everything straight. So you're making lists. You have all these lists and paper everywhere, trying to do it all. And the one thing I try to teach people is you cannot do everything. You can't, you have to have a program for the day and do the best you can. If you haven't gotten to all 42 things on your list, it's okay. 
you know, what did you do for the day and what did you do well? Now, there's a rabbi in Boston who uses the approach of 5511. And 5 5 is what five things, if I have this right, are you going to do or plan for? What five pages can you read? What are you grateful for? What is the one strategy that you can look at? What is one thing at the end of the day that you look at that you've done well? These are simple strategies. And if you utilize mindfulness on a daily basis, you will realize, and there's a great quote that comes to this, that mindfulness is not fluffy clouds. The quote really says, that mindfulness is like an internal hummer that you get to really simmer down and bring down the noise and the overwhelm and the anxiety that we all face every day. One woman who emailed me back after one of the sessions and what she said is that so often I'm taught about what stress does to us, but she appreciated the strategies that I offer. It was having to do the work. It was having to have her children. It was having loved ones who are older in her life. How do you do it all? So what she did is bring it all back to the small brackets of time. Deep breathe, accept that this is just one hour, that I don't have to be all things to all people. I will do the best I can. I will be intentional. And when I can feel my heart racing or my head pounding, it's time for me to step back and utilize the principles. It's my personal belief that resilience and mindfulness should be taught in all levels and curriculums in schools. This isn't something that should just come in a conference. We should teach children now. Children in schools are incredibly stressed. They're dealing with a lot of technology. They need to learn mindfulness. It should be across the board in all healthcare, all professional schools. How stressed are those individuals who are not taught how to manage that stress? And one of the things mindfulness does is one, help resiliency, boost creativity, and improve concentration. Teach it also to police, to first responders. They need it what they are faced with every day. Emergency departments personnel, everyone who deals with that sort of barraging trauma every day needs it. We all need this concept throughout every, every area in the country. One of the things it does is promote resiliency. And that's my ultimate goal. Thank you for watching this video, and we would love to share more with you. So please subscribe to this YouTube channel. For more information about all of our trainings, please visit the link below.